Thank you very much. The next, next speaker will be Mr. Chen Xiao, who is the uh, director of Polar Research Institute, and he also is the executive dean of the College of Global Change and Earth System Science, who is an expert on polar remote sensing and climate change. His presentation is on the rapid Arctic change and its climate, climatic effects on China. Please welcome. Okay, okay dear president, distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, my great uh, pleasure and honor to be here to give a talk. Uh, I'm Xiao Chen from Beijing Normal University. Okay, my talk is uh, composed of four parts. The first is the Arctic ra uh, rapid change in the warming, uh, uh, warming planet. As, as, as we all know, the global warming and the, re the red line uh, shows the uh, fast increasing global mean surface temperature in the, in the, past, uh, in the past years. Uh, so our planet is, uh, is warming and Arctic sea ice, which is a very important uh, component of the global climate system uh, has, has been uh, decreasing very fast uh, in the past uh, decades. And the lowest two, uh, two uh, CIS low record is uh, appeared in 2000, uh, 2007 and 2012. Okay, the sea ice melting gives us the open sea, uh, just uh, also the opportunities so the ships can go through the Arctic uh, passage. Uh, here are the uh, annual uh, Arctic sea ice minimum in the past uh, 10 years to show, uh, show the, the, the opening of the Arctic passage. Also changing very fast is the glaciers in the Arctic. This image shows the, the left image shows the melting extent in Greenland in this summer, which is very stronger than, and stronger than ever. And the right too shows the uh, fast increase of the melting area in just one week. Uh, so the melting of the Greenland uh, glacier contributes a lot to the global sea level rise. And as, as, as we all know, uh, most of the developed cities uh, are, and most of the GDP is around the coast of China. So China cares about this a lot. Okay, let's come to the second part the linkage to climate in East Asia and uh, China. Uh, the right panel shows the uh, mechanism of the Arctic uh, sea ice change. Uh, the story is like this. Global warming leads to the reduction of Arctic sea ice, then decrease the surface albedo. The ocean will absorb more heat than the heat and will release in the fall to make the atmosphere warmer. Thus, it might link to the mid and low latitude area. However, it's not just uh, so, so easy. Uh, in this slide, uh, in recent years, China has uh, experienced more frequent and strong uh, extreme weather. Here are some examples. Uh, this is the frozen rain in South China in early 2008, which might be linked to the uh, the, the very low sea ice in the summer of, uh, in the September of uh, 2007. And also the drought of the, uh, a drought, the drought in North China in 2011. And uh, the summer on Euro hot weather in China in uh, 2013, it might be linked to the Arctic uh, very low sea ice in 2012. Uh, we did some research and we have some findings. Uh, in, this, in this slide, we can uh, find that there's a significant correlation between the September Arctic sea ice uh, concentration and the Barents cover sea, uh, sea ice concentration. So this might lead to the high pressure and then make the issue winter cold. And in this slide, we can see that the retreat of Arctic sea ice will bring frequent cold weather, cold winter in mid and high latitudes of East Asia. 
The, the second finding is the key link between the West Greenland Sea ice anomaly in winter and the atmospheric circulation anomaly of Eurasia in summer. So the winter sea ice is an effective prediction factor for summer Eurasia atmospheric circulation and rainfall anomaly. And also just this slide has been shown in Professor Yang's uh, talk. It is found that the, uh, the precipitation in winter will be more frequent and strong. So what will happen in the future? This imagination in, uh, in this slide is uh, threatened, I think. It's, uh, we, we can see the disappeared uh, sea ice and the Greenland uh, glaciers. So we, they come, we come to the third part of my talk, the projection of future Arctic sea ice. We have developed a, a system model named, it's called BNU ESM it's in our university. We have a supercomputer to do the simulation and modeling. And it is rated a middle in the uh, IPCC uh, CMAP5. And using this model, we predict the future Arctic sea ice coverage in September. And we got some uh, estimation for the when will the sea ice disappear in Arctic. And this page shows the future sea ice coverage under SCP 4.5 will disappear in 2018s. Also, uh, we use the multiple Earth system models employed in the CMAP5. It's about 30 mod models to we narrow the prediction. We, we use two methods to narrow the prediction of ice freeze Arctic summer, which is around the 2050s. This work has been published in P PNS and cited by IPCC AI5. So are this believable? I don't think so, because uh, the Earth system is very complicated. Uh, it's not easy to just use that, such a computer game uh, uh, as maybe it's uh, just a mo Earth system model to, to, to predict since the, the, the sea ice in, Arctic, uh, in Antarctica has never been uh, correctly uh, simulated using these models, models. So we need to do more work to improve the knowledge of the Earth system. Uh, that is the first part of our uh, watching Arctic changes using the remote sensing efforts. This, this picture shows, uh, shows uh, our efforts in, uh, in remote sensing in for the fifth uh, Chinese, uh, Chinese Arctic uh, scientific investigation in 2012. Uh, remote sensing image has been uh, applied in this, in, in this investigation. And we also uh, care about the, the Greenland glacier change uh, change mapping using uh, both the US satellites and the Chinese uh, set own satellites, especially the, the highest resolution satellites. And uh, we care about, we also focus on the, the glaciers in Swabad. UAV are used in, in, in this research, and here are the results uh, got uh, in, in the previous two seasons. And the most most of the important final effort is China is uh, developing the CubeSat constellation. It's named STU-2 mission. It's mainly for the uh, monitoring of sea ice in polar regions. It has been successfully uh, launched in, uh, in, in, on September 20, 25th, and the data will be uh, distributed uh, and uh, shared with the public and the scientific uh, community. Okay, thank you for your attention. Thank you.